greenware clay. Is any clay? Uh, Before it has been. Yeah, bisque in the kiln and permanent. Yes, permanent. Exactly. Yeah, like me, I'm permanent and I'm big. What is greenware clay? Well, I think that pretty well articulated it. It's any clay before it's been bisked in the kiln. After it's been bisked, that clay will be permanent and live on for archaeologists to dig up and go, what the heck is this? So with greenware clay, there are several stages, wet, leather hard, and bone dry. And we're going to talk about the tactile qualities, the flexibility of the clay, the clay and how you can connect pieces of clay to each other, recycling, and of course, shrinkage. Now you might ask, what do they look like? Well, here's wet clay, straight out of the bag, ready to go, very flexible. Leather hard is in the middle, and then there's bone dry in the end. And you can see how differently they look. So you might ask, what does tactile mean? What is that? What, what, is, what, what is tactile? Tactile is not how does the clay feel, because clay does not have feelings. What it is about is how the clay feels as you're handling it. When the clay is wet, it's right out of the bag. It's wet, it's mushy. It's a little bit sticky maybe. When it's leather hard, the clay is a lot stiffer. It's damp and it's still cold. And when it's bone dry, it's chalky and dry. So when we look here, you'll notice here are those three examples. When I press my thumb into the wet clay, it will leave a fingerprint and it will really dent in. When you do with a leather hard, not so much. The clay doesn't have a lot of give to it. And if you try it with bone dry, it's just gonna break. So when you get bone dry clay, you're done with working on whatever you have. Where do all the greenware scraps go? You're gonna notice a bucket over near the vent switch. You're going to flip that up, or no, you're not gonna turn the vent switch on. You don't need to worry about that. But what you do do is take any of the doo doo, you do take any of the scraps and put them into the greenware scrap bin. That means that they will be recycled. If it's leather hard clay, that's fine. It'll just become bone dry and it'll break down. So what is flexibility? Flexibility is if you bend the clay or you manipulate the clay or you wanna uh, make it so that it's uh, smaller or larger. The best time to do any of the flexibility tests is when the clay is wet. That's when you can build your forms. But as we know, when wet clay is really wet, it tends to droop, it tends to sag. So we need to let it dry into leather hard. There are a lot of different leather hard stages, but we're just gonna say there's leather hard. Sometimes there's early and sometimes they're late, late, but just say leather hard. And then there's bone dry. There is no flexibility with bone dry clay. It does not flex. There is not much you can do with the clay. So make sure that you try and keep the clay as wet as possible. So here are those examples again. Now, when I take the wet clay and I try to bend it, it cracks a little bit. See, cracks right there. Cracks are bad. So we can smooth those out when it's, when it's wet. The next one over, leather hard. If I try to bend that, it's gonna break. It's gonna crack. Can I fix it? Yes, but I'll talk about that later. And then of course, bone dry. I can't really do anything to it. There is no bending it, but I can make it into a nice upside down U shape. So the next stage is clay connecting. So this is when you can take different pieces of clay and different stages of greenware and attach them to each other. So when clay is wet, you can attach it. Slip and score, no problem, right? When you're leather hard, it's a little more difficult to attach things, but it's definitely doable. And I'll talk about that in the next slide. And then there's bone dry. Bone dry, there is no thing happening, no thing. There is not any attaching. The clay is so dry that it will immediately break up when you try and add water to it. So here's some examples. So again, the wet clay and the leather hard clay, you can connect wet clay to leather hard clay or leather hard clay to leather hard clay. We just wanna make sure we use some slurry or as we all know, when you make slip, you're kind of rubbing the piece where you're gonna make your attachments, creating that ceramic Velcro. You just wanna use a little bit more of that and you're gonna add slurry to make those connections. 
And then at bone dry stage, there is no connecting. You cannot take green and add it to bone dry. You cannot take wet and add it to bone dry. So again, bone dry is not looking good as far as creating forms. So the next stage up is recycling. What do I mean by recycling? With recycling, you can take the clay and reuse it over and over and over again before it has been fired or bisked. So in the wet stage, sure, you could recycle the clay and put it in the recycling bin. But why would you do that? It's perfectly good clay. You can make things with it. Then there's leather hard clay. Not so much with recycling. If you put it into a bucket of water, it actually has just enough water in it that it won't give any off and it won't take any in. All you need to know is that you can put leather hard clay into the recycling bin. The best time to recycle clay is when it's bone dry. The best time because it has no water in it, it desperately wants water so that when you put it into water, it will literally break down into mud within about 15 minutes, depending on the size of the chunk of bone dry clay. We've got shrinkage. As the clay dehydrates, as the water comes out of it, your work is going to shrink. It shrinks in all about 10 to 12 percent for earthenware clay, which isn't too bad. It's not going to be tremendously noticeable, but it'll shrink even a little more once we bisque the clay. And that's the next stage we're going to talk about. So that is all the things that you need to know about greenware clay.